So being a musky guide, a few things that I see people who are just getting into the sport or people who are um, somewhat experienced in the sport, some mistakes that they make. There's quite a few of them, but we're going to touch on a few of them today. And one is rod length. I think that people use too short of rods for a lot of applications. Um, as musky fishing evolves, rods keep getting longer and longer. Myself personally, I don't own a rod anymore under eight foot six, and that's for my jerkbait stuff. Um, and then those rods extend out to 10 feet long. So we're going to go over why I use certain rods for what applications and why you as well should use a longer rod. So uh, I guess we can kind of go through a different length. So I said an eight foot six rod, right? So eight foot six is for jerk baits. Um, I think that you don't need those short pool cues is what they used to be called, those six footers, seven footers for your jerk baits. I think um, as highly geared as reels are these days that you can get just as much action out of the bait with your reel handle and very little rod movement that you don't need a super short rod to worry about slapping the water. Okay? Um, I think once it comes to boat side stuff, the longer rod you have, the better for fighting your fish. Um, the more you can load that blank up, the less air that fish has to possibly get off. So like I said, eight foot six is my shortest rod that covers my jerk baits. Um, and then going from there, I get into the nine and 10 foot stuff. Nine foot rods. Nine foot rods are kind of my go-to. They're incredibly versatile. You can fish a ton of different baits on them. Bucktails are great. Uh, big crankbaits are great. Rubber stuff is great. They're just a really good length of rod, I feel. You got a lot of length for your figure eights. You make those really big turns. And then as well, they're not like super, super long. When you get into that 10 foot stuff, that's kind of angler specific once you get to that length. Um, but nine footers are great for a lot of things. You can even work jerk baits on a nine foot rod if you want to, that it's gonna require a lot more reel work, but nine foot rods are kind of my go-to for all of my baits. They're super versatile and they're great for fighting fish. So the last rod that we're gonna talk about is the 10 footer. The 10 footer is kind of new in the industry, but it's a great versatile tool. It helps you throw bucktails incredibly far. I think they can be a little bit long on rubber baits, um, but as far as bucktails, they're incredible. They can help you cast those baits a very long ways away from the boat and you can do incredibly large turns. You, you almost have 20 feet worth of figure eight from one end to the other, which is great for turning those really big fish. Mistake number two, um, I think a lot of people buy brand new baits, right? You got yourself a brand new musky bait. You're excited to use it. You're going to clip it on. You're going to throw it. Stop. Take a file and sharpen your hooks. Just because your hooks are brand new does not mean they're sharp. They're dull. Just because you didn't hit a rock doesn't mean they're sharp. They're dull. Brand new hooks come out of a mold, right? They're somewhat sharp, but they can always be sharper. It's something that really bugs me if I were to lose a fish and I bring in my bait and my hooks are dull. There is, you know, in the back of my mind, there's something I could have done to potentially not lose that fish. And that could, that really bugs me sometimes when I see that happen. Um, if it's a lack of someone telling me they have a dull hook or they hook something, but a hook file is a great investment for musky fishing. There's two kinds of files. There's the ones with two round files and they're glued right next to each other, or you can get a flat file. Personally, I like a flat file. I think you can get a little more detail out of these. Uh, there's different ways to sharpen a hook. Some people just strictly sharpen the point of the hook do this for you. This thing nice and sharp. Get it on all angles, make it as sharp as possible. Very sticky. And you can see the silver metal where I where I shaved it off from the file. That some people sharpen their hooks like this. Uh, myself, I'm not saying that way is wrong by any means. Myself, I like to run the file down the, the whole entire side of the hook. on both sides, and then you kind of touch up around the, the outside. Like that, so the, this whole part of the hook now is shiny, correct? So this to me kind of files down the sides of your hook for a little bit easier penetration. There's not as much bulk to the hook that you're trying to get through that fish's mouth or their lip versus just sharpening the tip. It's, it's very minute and I don't know if it really matters or not, but it's just a mental thing. I like to shave down the sides of them, but new hooks are not sharp. Sharpen your hooks. One last thing before we move on to the last mistake, a way to check to see if they're actually sharp, kind of stick them in your nail. If they're not really sticking in your nail, they're not really sharp. If I go to a sharp one here, see how it kind of sticks in there? It sticks in your nail, it's sharp. Now for the final mistake, what I see a lot of is people that come in and do 
a lazy L turn, it's kind of what I call it. You're coming in with your bait, if you're on this angle, people are just gonna pull it kind of by them. Don't see a fish, they pull their bait out of the water. I think that can be a huge mistake. The whole point of a figure eight is the change of direction. There, you really didn't make a change of direction. So in a situation like that, what you need to do, the bucktail's coming in on this line. You come here and make a corner, at the bare minimum, make a corner. So you can see if there's a flash of a fish, um, that change of direction can really trigger a strike, kind of almost when they come from the bottom of the lake, it feels like. And you may not always catch the fish, but it can also lead you to where there is a fish that you can come back to on another time period to try and catch that fish. You don't always need to catch them, but knowing where they are is so crucial. And that is three of the biggest mistakes I see from beginner musky fishermen.